This is the new Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, and it's as though it's been reading a self-help book, because while it looks pretty much the same as the old PHEV on the outside, underneath the skin, it is in a much better place. That's because Mitsubishi have given it a new 2.4 litre petrol engine. It's also got a bigger motor at the rear as well for a bit more oomph, and the battery is larger as well, so you can go further on an electric power alone. But like I say, the exterior, well, the styling, you've got some new bumpers at the back and at the front, but they're hard to notice. In terms of pricing, well, the car starts from just under £37,000, but through Carwell, wow, you can save £4,500. Now, that includes a £2,500 government grant. And to see how much money you can save on a new car, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen to go to Carwell. Wow. Let's start this review by talking about the Outlander PHEV's boot. So, it's a decent size, but it's not as big as the boot you get with a Skoda Kodiak. The reason for that is that you've got your batteries and your electric motor under the boot floor and they eat into space, so it's about 25% less in terms of the capacity, but yeah, it's going to be fine, isn't it? Also, there's no load lip to lift stuff over, so you can easily slide items out. This one's got a special covering here, so it's handy if you've got a dog, it won't muck up the carpet in the back. If you look under here, you'll see there's the space for the charging cables, which is handy, keeps them out of the way, so they're not rattling about all over the place. You've also got some storage areas down here. There's a 12 volt socket here. A few tether points about the place, like there and there, but they're not that solid. So, you know, you couldn't tie something really heavy down like a person that's trying to escape. Not that you'd ever want to do that. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, why have we got some cup holders? The reason for that is that you can get a petrol version of the Outlander as a seven seater. So where the batteries and the motor are, the seats fold into. Then when you fold them out, the rear passengers have somewhere to put their drinks, which is nice, isn't it? What isn't nice is how you have to fold down the rear seats. So I've got to go around to the side of the car and flip out the seat base. It's a very old fashioned system. And then you can fold the seats down. As you can see, then you get a nice flat low bay. And if I was to take this out, that's, I'll just take that out. <laughs> Cue comments about Matt doesn't treat cars very well. You can see you can slide items quite easily to the front of the car. I'll just put that down, see if we can get this out beforehand. Now for more information on this car's practicalities, such as how much stuff you can fit in the boot, click on the top right-hand corner of the screen to get a car wow. Now let's see what it's like for rear passengers in the back of this Outlander PHEV. I'll just put this back. Oh, God. See what I mean? It's like a puzzle. You don't need a puzzle when you're messing around with luggage, seats and children. Imagine, you've got a baby under your arm and you're having to do this. It's, oh, anyway. Right, what I'm not gonna complain about is this. Look, I can, here it is, up on the app. I can recline these rear seats and I can recline them quite away, as you can see. So it does make it comfy. And because it's quite a tall square vehicle, got lots of headroom, especially in this position, lots of knee room, lots of foot space as well. It really helps that this floor is almost completely flat. So there's loads of room. That's great. Also, the rear windows are huge because the waistline is quite low. So kids will get a good view out. If you need to carry three people in the back at once, it is doable, even with adults, because the car's body is nice and wide. What's not so good, though, is the fact that you've only got one charger. So the three of you will have to argue about who charges their phone first. Storage is all right in the back. You've got some pockets here. And the door bins they have enough room for two bottles. Yay! So let's move into the front, because storage there is good as well. As you can see, there is room for a large bottle in the front door bin. In terms of the rest of the space, well, you've got a decent sized glove box. There's some more storage under here and you have a couple of cup holders there as well. In terms of the design, well, you probably notice this carbon fiber effect. <laughs> it's completely unnecessary, but it does actually look all right. The rest of the design though is a little bit bland. It's all a bit dark and drab and a bit old fashioned considering this is the new. Outlander PHEV. Quality, higher up, it's actually all right. And here as well, yeah, it's not too bad. When you reach a bit lower down though, you have got some scratchy plastics. And then there's this smattering of buttons down here for various different things, such as one USB port there. Yes, just the one. And then some other functions such as heated steering wheel and blind spot warning for this particular car. And then the yeah, 12 volt socket, and then a hole there, probably for your key. It's all a little bit haphazard though, it's not great. The rest of the layout in terms of the ventilation system, it's easy to use as well. The Navi, well, all cars as standard get a seven inch screen. 
there it is. And actually, when you first look at it, it seems fine and you can just swipe for the different functions. However, once you enter one of the functions, such as the radio, it all just looks a bit crap and confusing. It's not the easiest system to use. Also, right, now I've got to figure out how to turn this down. There it is. Yeah, shut up. Yeah, another thing about it is you do not get satellite navigation, not on any model at all. You have to link your phone up, so you've got to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. But tell you the truth, that's not too bad because Mitsubishi's Navi systems have never been particularly good. You're better off using Google Maps, if you ask me. Now, for more information on this car's infotainment system, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen. In terms of specs, as standard, you get alloy wheels, climate control, and cruise control across the entire range. This is the next level up, the 4H, which includes leather seats, a power tailgate, and a 360-degree camera. The next level up, the 4HS, adds extra safety kit, including late departure warning, but I probably wouldn't bother going that. And you can go higher still with an upgraded stereo, but it all starts to get a bit expensive. So, I actually plugged this car's details into CarWow, and I got an offer back on this 4H for £32,500, which is a saving of almost £7,000. Though remember, that saving does also include the £2,500 government grant. Now, if you click on the pop-out button in the top right-hand corner of the screen, you can go to CarWow and configure your own car and see how much you can save on this or any car for that matter. So go check it out. Now then, it's time for the car wow, five annoying things about this car. Mitsubishi may have updated this car's propulsion system, but it still does that funny thing where if you've got the electronic parking brake on and you put the car in drive and you just want to shuffle it backwards and forwards and you haven't got your seatbelt on, it doesn't disengage the parking brake automatically. So it does this weird kind of like humping thing like that, almost like a horny rhino. The seatbelt for the central passenger in the back is mounted from the roof rather than from the top of the seat. Like in many cars, it's a bit of a faff to put it into place. Also, look how this sticks up. If you suddenly hop across into the middle seat, you could be in for a nasty, ooh, surprise. Or it could be a nice surprise, depending on your viewpoint. While I do like the fact that this load cover is nice and light, and it's relatively easy to put into place, check this out. It just looks so horribly cheap and flimsy. And this is quite an expensive car. After you're putting the seats back, when you've had them folded down, you always have to remember to oh, lift up these seat belt buckles and then hold them in place so it's all a bit of a fiddle. And that's why I didn't do them in the main part of the review because it would have taken too long. If you want to deactivate the electronic tailgate and use it manually, you can't do it at the tailgate itself or through the infotainment system like in many other cars. You have to press this rather nasty looking button that's just stuck on down here. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the CarWow 5 core features. You can get a special smartphone app which allows you to look at the car's battery level and check its charging remotely. You can also do things like set the temperature before you get in it. Because this car has electric motors at the front and at the back, you can go off-roading under electric power alone, which is quite unique. Also, there's three different settings for the four-wheel drive system. You can have normal, a snow setting for some added grip, and four-wheel drive lock, where you have the same amount of power going to the front and rear wheels. You can charge the car's batteries to 80% full in just 25 minutes using a rapid charger. But better than that, you can actually charge them to 100% from empty using a three-pin socket in just five hours, which means you can do it easily overnight or when you're at work. These pedals here on the steering column, they're not gear shifters. They actually alter the severity of the regenerative braking. So when you lift off the throttle, the turning of the wheels as the car slows actually helps put energy back into the batteries. And you can alter just the strength of that slowing effect by either pulling on this, going up to level five, which is the strongest slowing effect, or pulling on this one here to go to the weakest one, which is zero. Because this car has such low carbon dioxide emissions, it's very cheap in terms of company car tax. In fact, this car will cost you less per year in terms of company car tax than a Ford Fiesta. This Outlander PHEV is a really good car to drive in town because obviously being an SUV, you're sat up tall so you get a good view out. But the big thing about it is the fact that you can just drive on electric power alone around town. So the range on electric power is now about 28 miles and that's achievable. So you can actually lock the car into electric only mode and it'll actually go up to 85 miles an hour on electric power alone, but you won't be doing 28 miles range then. It's better for just pottering around and then it's silent. Now, because you've got a more powerful electric motor at the back, 
you've got a bit more performance when you put your foot down and it goes all right when you're just using electricity however even in EV mode if you floor the throttle the car knows that you want maximum performance and then it will kick in the petrol engine you can probably hear it now so it makes a bit of a noise but it's not as noisy as the old engine which was a 2 litre this is now 2.4 so it's not only smoother and quieter it's also more powerful so you've just got a bit more zip you're best off just driving around in the normal mode though and let the car figure out what is the best in terms of energy preservation so the actual official figure for this car is 140 miles per gallon but what you actually get can wildly differ so let's just say you're doing very short journeys to and from work you could get away with hardly ever visiting a petrol station in fact i know people who've owned these cars in the past and they're the fuel in the tank has actually gone off because they never really need to use it but if you do lots of motorway miles it's a completely different story because you'll soon rip through your electricity and then you'll be effectively just driving using the petrol motor and it won't be all that economical so you'll be looking at basically low 30s to high 20 miles per gallon so it all depends think about how you're going to use the car as to whether it's going to be right for you as for the rest of the driving experience well Mitsubishi has tweaked the suspension so it's a little bit more composed over bumps it does send the old jolt of the cabin when you hit a pothole but it's not too bad and as you go faster it definitely settles down and it feels like a secure planted car when you're driving it on the motorway and the seats they're comfortable enough so you can do long journeys in this no problem at all what's not so good compared to some other SUVs say something just normal as well like a Skoda Kodiak is the handling through a twisty road because it does feel like a big heavy slightly ponderous car it's in no way fun to drive this thing it just does an adequate enough 